Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. In today's video, we're going to start working with MLflow runs. So, as a refresher, what is a run? A run is any piece of machine learning code. It's the execution of any piece of machine learning code. Um, what the MLflow tracking API allows us to, to do is to track information or metadata associated to these executions. So the first method that we're going to explore is mlflow.startrun. And as you can see here, it dates a lot of parameters. All of them are optional. We're going to see most of them in the next videos. So let's run some code. First, I'm going to set my tracking URI. Now, I'm going to use mlflow.startrun. Now, this method returns a run an active run object that I am capturing here in this variable. So let me run this code and now print the type of this run. Now we can see that the object, the name of the class is active run. Now this object contains two attributes that are very important, info and data. Info contains information or metadata about the run itself, things like the experiment ID, the run name, the user ID, the status, lifecycle stage, and the run ID. Right? Now, notice something important here. It says experiment ID is zero, right? But we didn't specify any experiment. Well, this is because the default experiment that is active is the default experiment, right? And here, as you can see in the parameters list, there is an option, experiment ID that we can use to specify it and experiment. The other key or the other attribute that this run object contains is data. Now data contains information about metrics, tags, and parameters. In this case, since this is an empty run, we don't have anything there. But here we, we can see some tags, and these are like mlflow tags. We have things like the mlflow.run name, mlflow.source name, dot source type, and mlflow.user. Now something interesting here, mlflow.run name is this one, upbeat a vice it's two. This is a random name generated by mlflow, but here we can specify the name as a parameter in the run, wrong name. In this case, since we didn't specify the name, mlflow just created a random name for this wrong, right? Okay, let's get working. Now, I have a native run, and that means the login functions and login functions are functions like this that we are going to explore in a different video. But for now, just take into account that these methods can detect active runs and lock the parameters and metrics. In this case, we need the active run, right? So let me run this code. Lock parent and lock metric. And now let me show you this in the interface. So if I refresh this, right, and I go to the default experiment, because for now I'm working with this one, we can see the experiment that we just created. Sorry, the experiment, not the wrong, the wrong that we just created. Now here, we can see the parameters and the metrics, right, that we just provided. Now let me go back to the notebook. And here, I'm using this method mlflow.getRun just to get a new data version of the run object. So I'm going to use getRun and specify the run ID. I'm going to get the info, um, the data within the info info attribute. Okay, and then I'm going to get the data, right, that we have under the data attribute. And now we can see the, the matrix and parameters that we just load is in MLflow. Now let me show something here. The status of this um, run is running, right? If I try to start another run using the same method, mlflow.startrun, well, mlflow will throw an exception because we cannot start another run without ending previous runs, right? So let me try to run this cell to show you what will happen. So as you can see here, I try to use 
mlflow.startrun to start a new run, run2, but it failed because it says that this run already active, right? Now it says to start a new run, first end the current run with mlflow.endrun. And this is the method that we're going to see next. mlflow.endrun. And now this method basically changes the status of the run. So I'm going to run this method, right? mlflow.endrun. And now let me show this result in the interface. If I go here, and you can see that the status is running. If I refresh this page, it's finished now. Now this means that I can start a new run using the method mlflow.startrun. So I'm going to do that. And here I have a new run and the status of the lifecycle stage is active. Now I'm going to finish this run. And the, that will change the status from running to finished. Let me show you this in the interface. Here, if I go to default, we have the last run that we created, right? And it's finished right now. So it's very important to uh, finish or to end all the runs that uh, we have like active before starting a new one. Well, that was everything for this video. Thanks for watching it and see you next time.